This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So uh, I've been asked this, I think, enough times that I can no longer really ignore it. And for a long time, I've not used the Headrush gig board. Now, if you're wondering why that was, it was because I sold my Headrush gig board because I didn't feel like I could rely on Headrush. Uh, I bought that piece of gear used and they had this thing, the Rainbow of Death or whatever it's called, that was happening to people and in Europe it wasn't particularly well supported. So for that reason, I bought a second-hand unit and I sold it. Um, but since then, people have asked me many times if I would review the MX-5. So I found one on the forum used and I bought it specifically for that reason. Um, and I'll be putting some tones again back up. I think the, the MX-5 tones will work for any of you Headrush people so um, if you're waiting for that, if you bought my Headrush Tones this year or like within the last 12 months, um, just shoot me an email. But otherwise, I'd ask you people to, to potentially, if you want to try some of these Headrush Tones, head over to Gunroad and um, I'll put some stuff together. But this little unit looks pretty cool. I think this is a metal chassis and then like this kind of high impact plastic stuff, nice and red. The other slight criticism that I'd have about Headrush is that they're not super hot in terms of updates. You know, I think the last thing they added was the Engel Powerball, and prior to that, they added the Orange Rocker Verb. But I think you've got enough stuff in there anyway that you can get stuck into it and have a good time with it, probably. So that's what I'm going to do in this video. Um, the Headrush MX5. Uh, I really like the, the 
the compactness of this unit, that's like the size of a GT1, right? So there's a Boss GT1, quite similar in some ways, you know, that kind of idea of plastic and a bit of metal. Um, same number of switches and expression pedal. If I just happened across a... They literally just copied a Boss GT1. Odd. Anyway, uh, uh, on the back of this, we've got a guitar in, expression pedal, effects send, effects return, output right and left, phones, uh, a nice kind of small one, uh, aux out, aux, midi out, midi in, which are both kind of the little tiny jacks for midi out and midi in, which I'm imagining would not be super, super reliable for live use. Those seem like slightly small connections to be using live. Uh, USB and then this power thing. Um, yeah, let's plug it in and have a little go on it. Um, if you've got specific requests around head rush tones that you want me to try and dial in, um, I guess leave them in the comments and I'll try and get to those at some stage. I will be building, I guess, a, a library of some head rush presets again. Um, so yeah, if you do want some tones, I've done plenty in the past. So the, the folder already has a bunch of head rush tones. I may try and load some of them in here actually. Um, but let's just dig in and see what it's like to actually use the unit. Okay, so I've just put together a couple of presets, kind of just building on some things that I've learned over the years since I last used one of these. Um, and for sure you can get some really great usable tones out of it. <laughs> Um, you know, so that's like a lead tone that I just dialed in today. One of the, the semi kind of, the, one of the cool things about it, of course, you can run dual amps with this, which with some of the cheaper stuff like the Podgo, you can't really do. And the HX Stomp, uh, you could run this type of preset, but some kind of dual amp stuff, you get a little bit limited. Also the Hotone Ampero Stomp, you can run this sort of thing. Um, now I dialed in this clean as well. The one sort of area where I think there's a little bit of, um, if we go into sort of delays and stuff like that, um, reverbs and delays, I think there's in some ways a little bit of a, a lack of stuff on these. Um, so we've got like very long here, ambiverb. Also the way you can position these is a bit kind of limited in some ways. Let me just turn that one off. I think that's quite a cool new thing uh, if we get rid of that sure and then kind of other stuff so reverbs delays uh, air reverb 11 reverb um, you know there's you know not loads of reverb choices uh, so let's try this dense Um, non-linear, let's try that.
Um, so yeah, a little bit, some kind of limitations really compared to say their Helix potentially or uh, let's just jump into the delays quickly as well. Uh, in terms of delay style, so you've got like air, dynamic, let's just try the shimmer for now. Uh, let's try soundscape. You've got these presets which are kind of cool. can either be it's only really octave so a little bit limited there as well so I saw there was a pitch delay um, so let's try default up turn the feedback up we get more Okay, so that's a really cool one actually. So let me just jump back in. I'm going to add that to my preset discard changes. Not bad at all. That's pretty cool. Um, right, so then back and just turn that off for now but it's there as an option the other little kind of thing that I would suggest is that we a little bit limited in terms of amps so in terms of amps we could run we've got Rockerverb, Engel Powerball, uh, Deluxe Gain Mod, Tweed Basement I think, Tweed Deluxe Reverb, Tweed Princeton, um, Blackface Deluxe and then Vibrato, um, Mini, Princeton so a few options there, Fender-wise. JTM 45, Vox AC30, two channels of that. Flip Bass, uh, a Fender Twin, Black Shimmer, whatever that means. A Plexi, another Plexi, another Plexi. Um, some of the Silver Face kind of things. Another Plexi. Elite 800, so that would be like a JCM 800, right? Um, then Roland. Um, Mesa Boogie 2C Plus, I think, Soldano SLO, Tread Plates, um, MS30, I wonder what that might be, is that going to be matchless? Yeah, so there's not as much amp choice as some of the other modelers, uh, or, you know, some of the other really good modelers, um, but I think what you've got there is pretty good. <laughs> There was a, a new feature that I saw, which was this hold thing, which I've not managed to get to work um, yet. So let's just see if I can do this. Um, pray for me. Stomp hands free. Hold, is that one there? No. Uh, so we need to go to hardware assign. And toggle here. Hold. Switch. Let's just see what this does. So then, Yeah, like this hold, I really like that. GC hold. It 
there's lots to like about it really um, I guess as well I really like the looper features uh, I think these are pretty cracking <laughs> I might come back to this at some other stage and show you because I think it's really pretty cool uh, and you can peel back the layers as well I think one of the best loopers going I think ultimately for my money although they've brought out a, a smaller unit which I think you know it's a really nice form factor in, in a lot of ways although you know three foot switches is not always a thing that I love in terms of once you're actually gigging these things I think it's often ends up being sort of one switch too few but in any case i think the updates to the hardware are pretty nice i feel like though they've been surpassed in a lot of ways in terms of what the unit is actually capable of in terms of models you know in terms of you know reverbs and delays i'd say like line 6 hx stomp would be my preferred option over this or even podgo because that has mostly the same models unless you need dual lamping in which case it would have to be the HX Stomp. Um, equally, I think the Hotone Ampero Stomp really does punch above its weight and competes with this pretty nicely as well, being able to do the dual lamping thing. Uh, I think if anything needs a PC editor, it might be this. This screen is not that easy to see for me. Um, and yeah, a touch screen of this size, I feel like in some ways that could have been a priority for head rush uh, especially you know if you're expecting some kind of older people to use these um you know or people that don't have great eyesight i think this as a unit is not necessarily especially after using something like the quad cortex the, the touch screen on that feels massive and very easy to read in comparison the some of the amp icons on this end up being tiny also some of the menu systems feel quite old um, what I like about the amps though, some of them, the ones that have tremolos built in actually have that there so you don't need to use a block for tremolo if it is an amp like a Princeton or something that might have an actual tremolo on it, cool feature. I really like the looper on here still, I think it's one of the best loopers on any modeler and I believe you can actually save the loops on these still. Uh, and that little hold feature which is new is really neat as well. Um, so ultimately I think they're not really on the same pace of updates as someone like Fractal, Line 6 um, and the, the ones that I think have a really strong community base. That's another thing that you might notice if you go onto the Headrush Facebook page. It's kind of been left to, to, to the ghosts and uh, you just see a lot of like motivational posts on there. So that's a bit of a shame as well. I think that's a, a good way to have a better community for a company like Headrush. But those are my thoughts on it. It's not my first choice, to be honest with you, but you can get some great tones out of it. And if you wanted those, you could head over to Gumroad if you wanted to try them. And let me know in the comments if you've got any kind of requests for me to build any presets with this. Uh, it's something that I think I'll be fairly happy to use. Um, it's just, you know, if you're looking to this video for a review and some honest thoughts on it, it wouldn't be my first choice to be honest, given where the, the state of modeling is these days. I think a lot of these amp models as well come from 11, which are now very kind of old, and it doesn't seem to me like Headrush themselves are that committed to developing new models. And that's a little bit of a shame. I think the hardware is pretty decent. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Cheers.